And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Mercado from Rudiger Dorn and from Cosmos, False Money and True Status. Well, that's a good tagline. I like the idea. I like the cover of this game. Uh, today is market day, and there are many beautiful things for sale. Yay, another market game. We got lots of coins, and there's all kinds of different coins that you have, and you need to get stuff from goods. So a merchant, a selling and buying game, going to the market. Okay, that's not necessarily a bad idea, a bad theme. Let's see how it plays. Now the game revolves around this track here. You're going to be starting at a spot and moving around as you get points, moving around on the track. First person around ends the game and whoever moves the farthest on that final turn wins. As you land on various spaces on the track, you'll get these great coins here. You'll get uh, counterfeit coins. You might get rid of a counterfeit coin or if you land here, you get to move farther forward. Uh, you get to move a certain amount of spaces forward. You're going to be doing all this by bidding on and winning valuable items good smelling perfumes and going to the market. Each player is going to get a color of one of the characters in the game. You're going to get a matching bag and in that bag you're going to have a bunch of coins that are made up of various types as well as the black counterfeit coins. On your turn you have two different actions that you can take. One you can take all the coins that you've been pulling from the bag and throw them back in the bag. As you pull coins from the bag, you're going to put them on top of your character's face, uh, so you might want to throw them back in the bag. Or you can pull three coins from the bag. So you, uh, here's the three coins I pulled. Right away, the black is worthless. I put it on top of my character. So I only have two. If you have a seal, you can spend this and pull two more coins from the bag. So let's say these are the three coins I pulled from the bag. At this point, I can put these coins on the side of my character. So if I'm the blue player, I'm going to put the coins on this side. And I just have to decide where I'm going to put coins. Like here, I need one of each color. Here, I need three of the same. Two gold, two copper, two silver, two blue, two copper and a white, three of the same. And over here, I need three different and three of the same. So I could just put three blues here and win this right now and maybe put a copper here and it will stay there until somebody wins it. Once you win something, you'll get this many points. So here I get four points and I get a seal. And then we would replace it with the top item from here. Sometimes you're gonna get points depending on how far ahead on the track you are. And here I get these white coins. These coins can be used as any color, they're wilds. Although there are a couple things on the board that will determine, a couple that were items like this one that need the white coins. And sometimes you'll get one of these scrolls here. At the beginning of your turn, you can just pay a scroll and use it. So these let me move forward a certain number of spaces or go forward and get a coin and yada, yada, yada. You're going to be able to do things with these. So if I can't finish something, like for example, I put this here, it will stay here and other people will take their turns. And so it's kind of like a slow build auction. Once I get all three there, I'll get to take it and get the points for that. These two over here, this one lets you get a, uh, makes other people, the sec I'm sorry, I should mention, when you win something, the second everyone else goes back and whoever's second place gets a seal to make up for almost winning. Here that doesn't happen. Here you can just get a white coin immediately. And here you get a scroll immediately. Uh, but these two never go away and are never replaced. And also they don't kick everyone else out like these will. If I win this, uh, everyone else's goes away and then I get the points and so on. So that's it. That's the whole game. You're just going to keep going until someone gets all the way around that track up there. Okay, the artwork is fine, I guess. It shows all these different various fancy things that you are trying to get. Um, uh, that's a butter knife or one of Harry Potter's wands. I'm not sure. You know, you have all these things. It's okay. I mean, the colors are fine. The whole game is a little darker maybe than it needs to be. I mean, like darker in color. The coins themselves are not too hard to tell apart. I mean... I think you can easily tell which coin is which. Although sometimes if you see like the gold coin there, the gold as opposed to yellow coin on here doesn't match perfectly. But there's not a lot of symbology and everything pretty much makes sense. So as far as you tell the components, the only problem is, is you're placing these in front of you. So the game works best at a 
card table, a table that's a, for four people. So if you're playing on a longer table, you have to kind of turn things diagonally. So Bill and Susan are sitting here, and a Agatha and Tabitha are sitting over on this side, you know, the different angles. But yeah, it works. Uh, it will work well enough. You just got to remember what color you are. Well, so much for the buying and selling theme. I don't get that at all from this game. In fact, the game doesn't feel like you're going to the merchant at all. The, the theming of the game doesn't make any sense. It's like, here is some gold coins. I'll give you the rest later. Maybe if I draw them. And someone else is like, me too. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's essentially a slow auction mixed with a bag building game. Now, bag building games have become popular. What I mean by bag building is you put things into a bag and pull them out. And in this game, you're really only manipulating. You're getting more of the white coins, which, by the way, when you use a white coin, it's gone. You don't get to throw it back in your bag. And you have the counterfeit coins, which keep coming back in your bag. But there are different ways and different scrolls and things to get rid of those. So they're bad. But it's kind of like a deck builder, except you're pulling tokens from a bag. But here's the thing, as interesting as that is, and I'm not opposed to that, and the game is what I would consider to be pleasant, there is no tension in the game, and it never feels like you're doing anything other than playing a really slow auction where you are kind of not necessarily bidding, but hoping that the whims of fate favor you. Because that's what's going to happen here. You're sitting there going, I would love to bid more on this. I'd love to put down another gold coin. I sure hope I draw it. <laughs> and that's what it is. Uh, I'll put some coins in the spot and hope I draw the rest later on. Or you saw that draw, that first one, I drew three blue coins. What luck. I can win something immediately. Well, if you get three different coins, you're like, well, I'll put them on these different spots and hope that later on I get them. And that can be a little frustrating because when you're done with this game, not to mention the game has a move along a track thing that if you land on a spot, you get to move farther and you can say, but Vassal, that's clever because you can set your moves up to land on that and then go farther. Sure, you could if you could actively control that, but you really can't and um, you just take whatever points you can get when you can get them. So I don't think Mercado is a bad game. I think that the game itself is fine. You're sitting there and you're bidding slowly on these different things, pulling it, throwing them back in and doing it, spending tokens, moving around a board. And at the end, you're like, woo, someone won. But it's very, very forgettable. It has no tying to the theme at all with the four different color coins and a slow bidding price at the market. Um, and it's, I don't know that it's interesting enough to overcome any of that either. So, again, if you sat me down and said, we're playing Mercado, fine. Let's play it. I'll play it. We can laugh and talk. And I probably wouldn't even pay attention to the game that much because when I bid on something, I can sit there and go, meh, maybe it'll still be there when it comes back to my turn. Maybe it won't be. But there's no way to know for sure. So I like it, but not a ton. Dice Tower Judgment, it's good.